Well, hello, hello, hello. Catherine Langman here and welcome back to today's episode of the Productpreneur Success podcast. Recently, I heard someone advise a business owner to literally just focus on selling because that's the number one thing, right? The number one most important thing. And whilst I, you know, I definitely agree that a business exists for the purpose of making money through selling goods and services, you actually can't just focus on selling if you haven't got anyone to sell to. So really, if you want to generate the kind of sales frenzy, like maybe women at a shoe sale or perhaps seagulls down at the beach when you've just sat down with your fish and chips, first of all, you actually need to have a product and a brand that customers desire. And I'm telling you, no one desires anything that A, they don't know about or B, that doesn't appear to be very popular. So the first step with your marketing efforts needs to be attracting and engaging with your audience and building that brand visibility and generating that desire for your products. And in fact, this should always be part of your marketing strategy. It's not just something that you do at launch stage and then never look at again. You know, there's there's loads of things that you can be doing, of course, to build your brand visibility, you know, attract an audience and all of that kind of stuff. But today... We're actually going to chat about how to use paid advertising, specifically the three most effective social media ads that you can can and should be running in order to attract and engage your audience. If you do these three, three things, I can guarantee you, you will be enjoying much better, more profitable results with your overall advertising, and you'll be able to scale and grow your business a whole lot faster. Now, before we dive in, for those of you who are currently not getting the kind of great results from your advertising efforts that you'd like right now, uh, we've got 10 free Facebook ad audits on offer. Now, this is specifically for e-commerce businesses. And so if that's you, and if you'd like us to audit your ad account and provide you with our recommendations for how to improve your results or meet your specific goals, then all you need to do to book that in is head to productpreneurmarketing.com forward slash let's hyphen talk uh, to book that in. And uh, I'll make sure to include that link um, on the podcast show notes page. I know it's not always the easiest one to remember. Right then, let's get on uh, on with it and start to unpack this topic. And to help with that, I'm actually going to be welcoming one of my colleagues, Sally Bingham, back onto the show. Sally is a really talented social media ad expert, and uh, she actually works with a number of our clients to help build their brands and grow their businesses using social media uh, paid traffic. And she's also a coach in our Productpreneur Academy. So I know many of you know her already. So without further ado, let's welcome Sally onto the show. So here we are. Welcome back to the show, Sal. Thank you very much for having me again. It's been a while. So yes, time to talk ads again. That's it. It's time. And uh, so we're recording this in mid-February and uh, I kind of dedicated this month to the theme of brand visibility for a bit of a reason. So we're going to talk about using ads for growing your audience, essentially. Mm, that's right. It's a really good way, especially for those new businesses who don't have that audience to sell to ne necessarily straight away to get some content out there and tell people what they've got and tell them why they need it um, hmm. in a relatively cheap way. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as you know, as I like to say, sometimes I'm sure some of our listeners have heard me say this, but if, you, if your business is the world's best kept secret, you're not going to be making any money. We yeah. absolutely need to start with audience building as the first step uh, in any traffic and sales strategy, really. Yeah, that's right. Well, people hmm. can't buy your product if they don't know you're there essentially no. yeah 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 mm. I'm sure um I don't know if you have you ever read that book rich dad poor dad <laughs> um, years ago yes yeah uh, mm -hmm. but he um what's his name again Robert Kiyosaki he talks about how the best uh the best selling product isn't necessarily the best product it's just the one that knows how to sell <laughs> exactly <laughs> Exactly. It's the one that's out there that people are going to see. And, you know, if you want people to buy your product, you've got to be out there for people to find you. Exactly. You've got to go to them. They're not going to be able to come to you if they don't know you're there. Yeah, totally. So let's go through, uh, you know, a bit of a step-by-step. -step. I love a, a good step-by-step. -step. So 
um, we were chatting just before that we would talk about if you're a, a beginner with Facebook ads or just a beginner in, in business versus, you know, how you might approach it as you scale and grow. Oh. So what are, what are you teaching our, our students in the Productpreneur Academy when they're getting started? Yeah, so we've had a few people come into the academy who are who are the owners of a very a very early business. You know, they're they're Great. smaller. Yeah, they haven't um, had the chance to build their audience. They may not necessarily know how to build their audience. Um, they know who they want to sell to because they've worked out that avatar and they've worked out what problem their product solves and they've got all those things. But we still need to get it out there to people. And so. Facebook ads, conversion ads work really well if you've got an audience um, that you can really dial into. But if you're in those really early stages, you may not have that audience to work with. And also you may not have the capital to actually put behind it and pay for those conversion ads that can be a lot more expensive. So using engagement ads is a perfect way to kind of ease into Facebook ads. And it's not quite as scary because your budgets won't be as high. Um, so it's a matter of like starting with something like a video views engagement um, campaign. We know Facebook loves videos. Facebook always tells us it loves videos and it wants us to put more out there. It wants to engage people on the platform and keep them on Facebook. So the more we can use the stuff that Facebook loves and keeps people on the Facebook platform, you know, the better it's going to be for us. Mm -hmm. So any kind of video can work well, you know, something that's funny, something that's um, is bright and is obviously it's a video it's going to move but you know some good movement in there all those sorts of things are going to work well for a video views engagement but it's got to tell us about your product you know tell us something about you as a brand or, or your products or something about your your brand philosophy um, those sorts of things that can bring people to your brand and generate interest in your brand you know I'm thinking particularly of those brands that have some kind of eco focus um, you know, a video about their philosophy or, you know, how their brand started, those sorts of things can be really engaging for your target audience. So they're really good to throw out there into a video views campaign. Um, got to keep it fairly short. People's attention spans are really short now. So <laughs> we, we do need it to be, you know, sort of under that minute and, yeah. you can, and maybe even shorter sometimes. It's like, you know, if you can keep it under 30 seconds even, that's great. Yeah, um, you know, so the video views is really good in that respect to just get someone's attention. And the great thing is, is that you can remarket to those people who have watched the video then. So people who have shown interest and who have maybe watched the whole video as opposed to maybe watching five seconds and then clicked on, those who've watched the whole video are probably going to be more invested in your brand and know more about your brand, be more engaged with it. So you can retarget them in a conversions campaign on a small budget and hopefully convert them into customers and convert yes. them into, you know, really happy, you know, customers who rave about your brand and tell other people who are just like them about your brand. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I want to just quickly touch on something that you just said earlier, and that's about how um, Facebook slash uh, Meta really love video at the moment mm. which is certainly true and you know the short real style video in particular um, oh, yeah. mm. but you know uh, this idea that we kind of play the game so to speak to be kind of I guess in Facebook's eyes maybe good good citizens on the platform uh, yeah. but how important is that to actually impact our ad results at the end of the day like being able to to play the game that they want, you know, keeping keeping um, I guess it's keeping viewers on the platform, isn't it? Is what they want. That's right. You know, Facebook knows that they're going to make more money for the more people they can keep on the platform. So if we can help Facebook do that, then they're going to look at your ad account and your brand as more valuable. Um, yeah. And usually, if your account quality is better, then on the whole, what we see is that you pay less for your ads, you pay less per clicks and all those sorts of things. If you're playing that game for Facebook, they'll value your ad account and help you to achieve your objectives a lot more easily than if you're trying to work against the grain. Yes. In which case Facebook goes, well, no, that 
but doesn't help me. So I'm not going to be giving you the bandwidth for your brand that you you want. So yeah, it is important to play the game to a certain extent. Yeah. You know, we do it in lots of different ways, but you know, with Facebook, we just we do have to play that game. Mm, yeah. So I guess then the onus on us is to keep coming up with the content ideas if we want to do well, right? <laughs> that's right. And that's the thing that so many brand owners find so difficult because they've they're wearing 60 different hats in their business to try and get things done that creating that content just drops way down the list because they might not know what to do or how to do it properly or, you know, anything like that. It, it just makes it so much harder for them. And the longer they leave it, the harder it gets essentially. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's different things you can do by outsourcing that to content creators and brand reps and that sort of thing. Um, or encouraging your customers to send in their own little video as part of their review process or something like that. You know, there's yeah. lots of ways to get that content without adding extra tasks to your list every week yeah. as well. Yeah. But, you know, if you want it, you need to get it. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. it, it's in your best interest to get it and get these kinds of campaigns up and running too. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Um, I remember someone uh, a while back referring to this sort of process almost like a digital digital newspaper or a digital magazine, like, you, you know, mm. having to kind of be an editor of the, the content, which is quite a nice way to think about it as opposed to thinking about it as an ad. Because when you think about it just as an mm. ad, you think you just have to do this one thing, whereas when you approach it like it's, a digital newspaper or a digital magazine, you realize that you have to keep the fresh content coming through. Mm. And, you know, I think that's how we can keep eyeballs. You might get the eyeballs in the first place with one video that mm. you turn into an ad, but if you don't keep the fresh stuff coming through, then they might not hang around. <laughs> so. Well, that's, that's exactly it. I really like that analogy actually, because people use their social media essentially like a newspaper or a magazine. They get their information from it. They use it as a way to sit and relax on the couch, you know, <laughs> just flicking through it, all that kind of thing. And so like the advertising that, you know, you see in magazines and newspapers, it needs to be enticing, engaging, eye-catching, all those kinds of things. Yeah. But then also if it's the same ad in the same magazine and newspaper week in, week out for days and weeks and months on end, you're not going to notice it, which is no. exactly what happens with the yeah. online advertising as well. You know, you need to keep it fresh and um, bring new stuff in all the time so that it does stay top of mind for people as yeah. well. You know, yeah. that's, that's a great analogy, Kath. Yeah. I like that one. <laughs> How how many reels are you seeing about puppies these days, Sal? Oh my god! <laughs> you and I both with them. My my feed is full of dog accessories at the moment. So you know, for context, I'm adopting dogs very shortly, <laughs> and so the the algorithm has got me in that yeah. dog owner kind of thing I'm getting ads for pet insurance I'm getting ads for the harnesses and yeah, you know harnesses. um car you know seat protectors and dog beds and everything and new kinds of you know pet bowls that fit into a corner and like everything I haven't you know? seen those ones clearly I've yeah. missed out a little bit it was yeah. yeah yeah well clearly you need to you know look on the dog sites a little bit more <laughs> Kath, and you'll get those ones I'm just seeing the ones about training dogs at the moment. So. Oh. <laughs> Actually, I got a lot of those to start with and then I mustn't have engaged with them enough and so I'm not getting those ones anymore. But yeah. it's, it is interesting to see how the algorithm works in those ways because I was not getting those ads previously when I did have a dog because yeah. I wasn't visiting all these kind of pet websites, but yeah. now that's where the algorithm's got me and, yeah. um, and it knows. What and I that's need. exactly what we want to be doing, yep. you know, for our, our, you know, for our own customers. Yeah, mm. we bring them in that way. Exactly. Is, yeah. So what are some, what's kind of like the next step in the, the brand visibility or, you know, audience building uh, process with using ads? Yeah. So video views is a fairly um, low effort engagement for the viewer. You know, it comes up in front of them. They can view it for as long as they want to. If they, they're not interested, they're probably going to flick off pretty quickly. Um, and if they are interested, they'll stay on longer. But essentially, they're just sitting there watching it. 
So if you want to um, maybe take it that step further and create a Facebook audience of people who are a bit more engaged with your brand, then you probably want to get a look at a campaign like a post engagement campaign. So that one actually involves someone stopping, like you've stopped the scroll, they're looking at your content, um, just like they were with the video, but then they're liking it you know, they're commenting on it, they're sharing it, they're saving it, those sorts of things. So they're actually taking that next step that invests them a little bit more in the brand. So not only is post engagement great for building that um, social proof on your, um, on your ad or your post, whatever it is that you're using, but it also, again, builds that engagement audience that you can then remarket to in yeah. a way too. So we're not specifically selling per se in this no. post. No, it's still more like a conversation starter type thing. Yeah, a conversation starter. Um, there might be a question somehow woven into um, the copy itself that encourages people to engage in a conversation and kind of answer that question. Um, or if you're showing something about your product that you know shows how it works and it's a really great parent hack or something like that, people might start tagging people who they know would benefit from that product and that sort of thing too those ones are gold if you've got one of those just get yeah. it up as a, an ad straight away because that's yeah. going to be really really good so you anything see. like that is going to work well but you know if you've got an organic post that you've put up and it's immediately got some really great engagement organically then put that up as a post engagement campaign to get more of that on it because a cold audience seeing a post with that engagement on it they're more likely to stop and read it yeah. even if they don't engage with it but they're more likely to stop and read it if they, they can see that other people have had value from that they're going to want to know more and know why and know and wonder if that's going to be valuable to them as well so yeah yeah I'm just thinking back to you know uh with the cloth nappy business and you know the yeah. sorts of like the sorts of posts that would do well with that mum audience would be like you know, the, the 10 kids' names who are the naughtiest this year or something, you know, <laughs> that kind of meme type stuff. <laughs> yeah, the meme type stuff does so well. I don't, I don't know what it is about memes, you know, that what has just got us in. It's, I don't know it's if it's a bite-sized bite yeah. size humour or what it yeah. is. Or Yeah, but, you know, the memes are great. But you probably don't want to be creating a whole post-engagement campaign from memes. No, no, no. But... <laughs> Parent hacks are probably better. <laughs> yeah, parent hacks would be better. Um, oh, there's one um, one in our academy who, you know, manufactures chocolate products and that sort of thing, and some of her best engagement comes from automation videos. So just a short video of the product moving through the machinery and that oh, sort of thing. People... <laughs> oh, totally. It's mesmerising. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think that video has been up for at least six months. I want to say eight months. It might even be longer. So, you know, it just keeps on doing well. People love it. So Curious. you go with it. You know, it can be something as simple as that. Yeah. That, that um, brings your brand to someone new, which yeah. is great. Yeah. yeah. So we've gone from kind of passive engagement to active mm. engagement. Yeah. And then what would be the next step in this audience building process? Yeah, so I think the next step with this is to bring people even closer into your brand and there's the need for you to be able to market directly to them. So if you're a new brand, building your email list is so important and we talk about this all the time about how important email marketing is and you know how you need to build your list and one of the best ways to build your list that has come out of Facebook ads is using lead generation um, campaigns. These, if you're using Clavio, it syncs seamlessly with Clavio. Um, and again, Facebook loves these campaigns because you're keeping people on the platform. So yep. years ago when we were running Facebook ads for lead generation, we'd run a traffic campaign to the website and get people to sign up via the website form or those sorts of things. But that's sending people away from Facebook. So Facebook very cleverly came up with its own lead generation campaign to keep people on the platform. <laughs> so now when you create a lead generation campaign, you can create a form that stays on Facebook. People sign up directly on that form. The leads go directly to a list on Clavio. 
Um, it's just so simple to get. Give us, you- give us an example of the average cost per email address that you'd be seeing over the last, I mean, say like, you know, before Black Friday, you were working on a lot of these ones. Yeah, it was about 50 cents a lead. There were some that were lower. Very cheap. Yeah. There were some that were maybe 30 cents or 40 cents a lead. Um, if it went up past 50 cents a lead, you'd start wondering why and <laughs> some changes to the campaign. Yeah. But, you know, 50 cents a lead, it's so pretty cheap. awesome. Yeah. Pretty awesome. And just because it's it went, so easy. The You know, the return on uh, the ROI on your email marketing, I mean, I think on average, just generally around the world, it's like 3,800%. But I know for our clients, it's more, it's higher than that because I can yeah. track it in your system. That's so, awesome. you know, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, you've got to have some incentive to get someone to sign up to they need to, for someone to give over their email address these days they need to know that there's something in it for them yeah um and it needs to be worthwhile as yeah. well um and from the lead generation campaigns that we've run over the last you know 12 months essentially um we've found that one of two things works and it's either got to be one really big prize that you know is worth a few hundred dollars at least or you need to have lots of little prizes so people have more chance to win. Yeah. Um, either of those things works really, really well. But like one small prize, you're not going to get a whole lot of take up for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that ain't easy much. Yeah. No, but then even we've had some um, clients who have run a lead gen campaign in conjunction with another brand so that they've actually pulled their um, their prize. So it yep. might be something from each brand. So that works really well too. So there's lots of different ways to do it, um, yep. but they are so easy to set up. They are so easy to run. You schedule it to start, you schedule it to finish. It just does it. You can have a flow set up in Clavio to nurture them, all that kind of stuff. It's just the easiest way to get people on there. And again, it's about engaging people with your brand and engaging new people and new eyes with your brand in a different way. Mm. So, um, yeah, I think the lead generation campaigns have just been fantastic I think it's one of the best things Facebook's done in a long time really yeah I remember when Facebook first brought it out it it didn't work very well it was a bit of a sucky campaign it just you know Mm. a whole lot of junk stuff but this last year like you say it's worked exceptionally well so whatever Mm. they've done to to fix it has worked quite nice (laughs) worked really well I've actually found when I've been scrolling um, through social media if I come across a lead gen that I'm interested in and I sign up for that I will immediately get a whole lot more coming to me as well that I might be interested in so the algorithm works in that way too so if um, someone's recently signed up to a lead gen for a brand very similar to yours you're likely to come up in front of them as well so yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. a good way to kind of segue into the market with your target customer. True. True. And so, you know, those steps that we've gone through, that's what you would be doing or recommending or teaching to early stage businesses. You know, Mm. I I guess the thing is like, you know, there's the budget side of things with ads. You know, if you're early stage business, you're not going to want to drop thousands and thousands of dollars generally, you know. Uh, But the other thing is when it's a, a pretty fresh ad account, the, you know, the algorithm doesn't really know who your customers are or who you are or, you know, in anything really. So mm. that's why it's really hard to get traction on the conversion ads initially. So mm. um, so this strategy definitely works very well for those early stage. But what about beyond that? You know, once you start to really scale and grow, because we've got some clients that are, you know, very yeah. much at the other end of the spectrum, do yeah. they still need to do this too? Yeah, absolutely. Like we've seen... A- Particularly over the last 12 months, we've seen a lot of evidence whereby if there's two top of funnel campaigns running, one conversions and one engagement, that the performance of the conversions campaign is much higher than when the um, top of funnel engagement is not running. So um, they definitely support each other. There's definite advantages to having an engagement campaign of some kind just ongoing on a low budget. Yeah. just that picking over in the background content coming in yep. at a fairly regular tick yeah yep. that's right it really does help um so I don't know whether that's Facebook going you know what you spend some more with us will look on your account more favorably or it just 
supercharges that algorithm for your brand. I, I, I mean, think it's getting that know. data. <laughs> yeah. I really think it's about getting that data and the engagement helps Facebook to work out much more quickly who are the kinds of people who are interested in your brand and that's going yeah. to help your conversions. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I think also, you know, the, there must be something in the fact that, you know, since the Apple iOS update constrained how much we can track once people yeah. leave the, the platforms. But if they're on, yeah. you know, Facebook or Instagram, you know, it's 100% trackable. So that data is very accurate. So I guess, yeah, there, there definitely must be a, a whole lot of benefit from that uh, training the algorithm as well as being the good citizens and playing the game. That's right, playing the game, <laughs> just doing that thing. But then, you know, you've got this fantastic on-platform audience that you can remarket to, you yeah. know, in, in your middle of funnel conversions or bottom of funnel conversions, whatever, you know, you happen to be running. But, you know, that audience is there and that isn't going anywhere. Like there's no gaps in that data that's on platform. So it's well worth doing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else you wanted to add to <sighs> this? <laughs> Have I said everything that was in my notes? I haven't even looked at it. <laughs> you don't need any notes, do you? No, I just talk about it. <laughs> But no, I think it really is something that everyone should be doing. It yeah. really is. It, it, as we said, it boosts up those conversion campaigns that you're running and they're the ones that are going to be bringing in the sales. So anything you can do to boost up the effectiveness of those is going to do you well in the, in the long run. And the engagement campaigns aren't labour intensive. They're, no. they're pretty easy to set up. Um, you can leave them for a while and not do anything with them. Um, and you can replenish them, change the content in them just by using your organic content that's already been posted. So you're not even having to create new content, new ads every time. You just go back through your organic content, go, okay, there's a bit of engagement on that one. That one was a good one there. Let's just whack that in this campaign and you're done. Like it's, yeah, it's easy. easy. It's easy to do. Yeah, mm. I want to give a shout out to um, No Nasties Kids New Zealand, who does a really good job of collecting that content from yep. her customers and from her brand reps and, you know, definitely makes uh, the job of having that engagement content ready to go really ridiculously easy. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone else from our academy or our client base that you could... Well, I know that Rocky Roadhouse does a good job on her engagement campaign because... As I said before, that, that's the one that we have the automation videos that just won't stop doing well. It's, mm -hmm. it's amazing. Um, so she's done very well with that as well. Yeah. Um, but there's lots that, you know, just getting, getting it out there, I think, is the biggest hurdle for most people. People will, like so many of our academy people will sit and obsess over, do I do this video or this video or which one's the best one to go with? And, you know, overthinking it, but just get it out there. Get yeah. it out there and the data will tell you what video or what post is going to be the best one to go with. Like just yeah. get it started. Yeah. That's all you've you got know. to do. And it won't cost you that much money. No, that's right. Maybe one last question for you, Sal. What would be the kind of starting budget for this strategy? I think starting budget, I would be putting $10 a day on a top of funnel video views and I'll be putting a top um, $10 per day on a post engagement. This is assuming you're not running any conversions campaigns or anything like that. But then also I would be making sure you are following up those, um, those leads, those engagements with a conversions campaign, whether you call it a middle of funnel or a bottom of funnel. I think if you've got a full funnel running, you'd be targeting them in your middle of funnel. If you've got nothing else running, just do a bottom of funnel and target them, give them that information about your brand. Um, and hit that hard sell in the bottom of the funnel to bring them out to yeah. get, that, um, get that sale. I don't think, like, yes, there's a point to running engagement campaigns without a bottom of funnel or middle of funnel conversions following them up, but you're losing those prospects. Oh, yeah. You're, yeah, you're missing some low hanging fruit by not having that step in place for exactly. sure. Exactly. Yeah. And, and the I, whole I, point of, sorry, you go. Oh, I was just going to say that, you know, at, at, by the side, for the same reason, you know, having a simple Google shopping account or performance max mm -hmm. ad running as well, because people do see these engagement ads and they, they, they'll go and Google you as well. And so yeah. having a really simple campaign on, on Google can help follow those ones up too. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I mean, the whole point of having your business is to sell your products. So don't shy yeah. away from it. <laughs> you, yes, you've got to generate the interest, but you've got to get those people across the line in the end as well. So yeah, yeah you've got to have that conversions campaign. They're following everyone up and not just letting them run away and yeah. forgetting about you. Yeah, love it. Mm. That is a, a great note to finish our conversation on, I think. Uh, I think that sounds good. Yeah. That point. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thanks for jumping no on today. Thank uh, you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully all our listeners have found that a little bit helpful and uh, hopefully we'll get to see some of you guys um, trying it out. <laughs> be interesting to see how people go with it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. All right, I will finish up here. So thanks, listeners, and look forward to being with you again on the show next week.